It's finally time to announce the winner of the 2024 Auto Buyer's Guide EV of the Year Award winner. That's quite a mouthful, but before we go to the specific winner, let's talk about the four finalists. Travis, who were they? So we had a pretty varied list this year. Uh, in no particular order, we had the Mercedes EQS line. We had the Rivian R1S on the lower end version, lower price. We had the Kona EV, and then we had the number one selling vehicle in the world, the Tesla Model Y. Yep, indeed. And uh, prepare for the winner here, everybody. The winner is the Rivian R1S. Uh, and now we're going to chat a little bit about why. I think that for me, the big fit, big deal with the R1S is that this is very unlike any other EV SUV that we've seen before. But it's mm. actually going to see some company later in 2024 because this is not shaped like a jelly bean. It's actually practical. It has a usable third row. And of course, it's very off-road focused. Yeah, and even with that competition coming in, which is, I mean, I guess we would categorize it as the boxier three-row electric mm -hmm. SUV, um, this is still going to have a couple things that those don't. And I think the uh, biggest difference is going to be the focus on off-road ability, yeah. um, mainly in things just like ground clearance. But this is this is one of the things that put the Rivian above everything else. Indeed. Yeah, let's go over those specs. So up to 14.9 inches of ground clearance, effectively 15 inches of clearance. Towing mm -hmm. 7,700 pounds, it can ford three feet of water. You can get up to 400 miles of range in it if you get the max pack. And you can get up to four electric motors in it if you would like to as well. Um, yeah. If you don't need the third row, you could consider something like the Hummer EV a competitor. But that Hummer SUV EV is only two rows. It's not three. And it's a lot less efficient. It doesn't have the practicality that we find in the Rivian either. And you're not going to be able to right now buy a, a model as affordable as that dual motor Rivian. Mm -hmm. um, and even so, you know, uh, if you're if you're looking for more um, as far as features or presence, I think you would find that in the Hummer. But that's one of the things this Rivian does so well, which is almost everything um, in yeah. any vehicle. You're going to have to make sacrifices. Uh, obviously, with a large vehicle, you're going to be sacrificing things like efficiency. But a lot of folks consider EVs to be less capable in a number of ways. You mentioned the range, this has it. Um, it does have the charging capability on top of the range. It may not be top of the class, but it is still plenty. Um, and towing capability, ground clearance. There is very little you can say this Rivian doesn't do and do well that not just different than the competition, the four finalists here, but different than the, the whole rest of the segment, which is electrified vehicles. Yeah, indeed. And so to give everybody an idea of how much ground clearance the Rivian R1S even has, the difference between the standard ride height, the lowest ride height, I should say, and the highest ride height, that's more of a distance that that suspension will go up and down than you see period in a Model X or a Model Y, for instance. I mean, it's very, very high off the road in those high, uh, high off road capability numbers. Now, the price tag, yes, I know this is going to offend some folks out there because it is starting at $78,000. So this is not mm -hmm. an affordable EV, mind you. I do think it's mm -hmm. fantastic. But on that front, we actually have somewhat little options in, uh, in 2024 because, of course, the Chevy Bolt and Bolt EUV, they have ended production by the time you are watching this video. General Motors mm -hmm. said end of December is the end for them. So Kona is really kind of taking over for them. And I really liked the Kona and I appreciate the format. I appreciate mm -hmm. the fact that someone's still giving us a smaller battery EV because it's very rational on a limited resource front as we've talked about here before. But mm -hmm. I will say that the big reason that it did not win for me is that it's not going to qualify for any sort of, of a tax preferential treatment because it's not built in North America. So it cannot get the federal tax credit on purchases. That's a big problem for it. Uh, the Tesla Model Y, obviously, it's a bestseller here. It's the rational benchmark option in this segment. Um, mm -hmm. But the Model Y is also going to be one of the few that's going to get the tax credits. So that's a big advantage for it in 2024. Yeah. We don't have all the details yet, but uh, most likely the Rivian will qualify for some portion of it in the base versions. Leasing, that's kind of anybody's guess at the moment uh, as far as how that's going to be treated on these models. But uh, the rest of them are not really going to get much tax credit treatment. No, I mean, when you look at things like price, and especially in the world of electric vehicles where pricing is so important, it's one of the biggest differentiators from the gasoline counterparts. You know, the Kona exists in a gas model and it's less expensive. Um, we, you know, here in Auto Buyer's Guide and EV Buyer's Guide, we're generally fans of the Hyundai Kia lineup, what they've done with the electric vehicles, the Ionic and the EV6 and 
And the Kona is going to be another one of those that we are definitely on board with. But without that federal tax credit, it makes it a lot less competitive uh, price wise than some of the mm -hmm. other options. And then when you look at the Model Y, it is the number one selling vehicle. And for very good reason, it does a lot of things well. But one of the things it does is meet the financial needs of some of its consumers. Um, the Model Y buyer and the Rivian buyer are looking for two different models. They're looking at mm -hmm. two different price points. And uh, while the Model Y can get expensive, the highest trim Model Y is not the reason it's the number one selling vehicle. So yep. it's not to say that we don't like it and it's not good at lots of things. But when we're looking at the best EV out there, there's there's very few compromises with that Rivian. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that most definitely. Yep, it's definitely impressive. So bottom line, if you're looking for a three-row Grand Cherokee or a three-row Range Rover and you want it to be electric instead, that's basically what the Rivian R1S is at its heart. So let us mm -hmm. know down there in the comment section below, what do you think should have won this year? If you don't agree with us, just shout out down there. Find us over at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of those social places. See all of you next week.